So welcome everyone to the first practitioner series um, being hosted by the UAE Center for Academic Integrity. We are quite excited to be inviting all of you guys to join us at this session today. Um, the title of the session, of course, is Innovative Responses, New Ways of Tackling Old Problems. Um, the whole reason we decided to um, start with this session was because we wanted um, the community to understand that we are here for the community. We, are, we want to support the community um, with uh, different events and um, different kind of workshops, panel talks, creating a safe platform for everyone to have this dialogue about academic integrity and how we can collectively and holistically um, work together to ensure that you know all our degrees and all the education that we are hoping to impart is done so in the right manner and with integrity. Uh, Chris, are you um, back on? I heard some some. So. Can you hear me now, Tom? Yay! Yes, there you go. So over to you, Chris. Thank you. I apologize for that. I'd like to say I know how I fixed it. I just press buttons until something else happens. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But I, I echo uh, Zenith's welcome. Um, and uh, what we'd like to do at the beginning, um, this is part of, uh, this is, I guess, the inaugural practitioner series. Um, and we, we thank you all for, for joining us. And we look forward to sort of an in-depth and engage conversation. So we have a couple of uh, very experienced presenters, members of our center, who will be um, sharing their examples. But we welcome um, your own input uh, throughout the session, and particularly in the in the Q and A section at the end. It's a practitioner series, right? So this is about knowledge exchange. It's not about us telling you the best practice. It's about shared best practices and trying to build up a, a community of practice that helps us better understand what the problems are. Uh, and then looking for some sort of innovative solutions and responses to them. So we're, this is a, you'll see on the, the screen, this is sort of our agenda um, for today. Uh, we're not gonna make it too rigid. The idea is, as I said, for it to be a sort of a, a flow of conversation. Um, what I'd like to do perhaps, um, Zenith, would you like to say a few words about the center and where we're hoping to go from here? Um, and then we'll come back to our, our speakers, Prof. Skamathi and Manda, if that's okay with you, Zine. I'm not going to touch my microphone just in case anything changes, so I'll just <laughs> stop talking. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, so, yes, for sure. Uh, welcome to the UAE Center for Academic Integrity. It is such an awesome feeling for all of us, the founding members, that we are here today. We are able to actually bring you the first event. Um, everything is so collective, the way we work, and the, car, the group is so harmonious. Um, the ideas that come forward are so fantastic um, that it, it really captures the essence of what we want to achieve with the UAE Center. Um, so as Chris said, the topic today is um, we are looking at uh, tackling uh, old problems with new ways. And the whole idea is to create this safe platform for dialogue and conversation. Uh, with, the, with the center, we hope to be able to bring at least two of these sessions every term. Um, if not more, depending on the, you know, the requests that come through. Uh, we've already got a couple of people who've asked if we're going to be having more sessions. That always makes us happy that we're probably in the right direction. Uh, so we definitely want the community to come forward and talk to us and send us emails or connect with any of us um, through LinkedIn or um, Twitter. And we will obviously try to always respond back to you guys so that we are here um, to collectively support um, everyone. Uh, today's session, uh, we have uh, Professor Gomati and uh, Professor Amanda from the Gulf Medical University who are going to be joining us um, and sharing the, you know, sharing their best practices. Um, of course, Chris is there and myself. We are the ones who are, we are leading the panel. But of course, as Chris said, we want to open up the floor and make sure it's a it's a very uh, communicative uh, platform. So anybody is, you know, you guys, please keep that up. The questions coming into the chat, we will try to um, call those out, and at the same time, uh, we will of course open up the floor uh, for discussions um, after you know the best practices have been set. So on to you, Chris. Excellent. Thank you very much, Yes. Uh, and just one small follow-up point. 
because it's a, we're building a, a community, if you do have ideas for particular topics you would like discussed or particular issues you would like us to cover in practitioner series or indeed things you would like to present as part of the, the UAE community, please do let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can to uh, put these events on so that we can keep this sort of conversation going, particularly in areas of importance and relevance to, to colleagues uh, across the, the nation. So, without further ado, we, we have both of our presenters, um, Professor Gamath and Professor Amanda, um, available. Afternoon to both of you. Um, I know that Professor Amanda is joining us from, so I suppose, an international join at the moment. Yeah. 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 To, to go first, simply because of the, the connection issues, just we make sure that we can we can hear, hear your, your viewpoint, and then we'll we'll have a, a, there's a discussion after that, and then we'll move on to Prof. Matthew, if that's, if that's okay with both of you. Yeah, I just wanted to know, there's no presentation, right? It's just a discussion. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Okay. That's great. Yeah. That makes life easy. <laughs> Always. <laughs> well, well uh, Professor Amanda, the whole idea was that we wanted to create this safe platform for the community to come forward and discuss um, issues that they might be facing and then have somebody from the community probably offer um, a suggestion that might actually work for somebody's classroom, you know? Um, so that's the whole purpose of the practitioner series. And we welcome, of course, the community to come forward and tell us that, okay, we want to talk about this topic next, uh, let us know when the next session is. So you're on, Professor Amanda. So of course, we're looking at the whole theme is looking at how we can tackle old problems in new ways. And the old problems, of course, we're talking about student teaching, uh, problems in assessments and assessing online. Uh, we've, of course, been in this whole lockdown section from March. Uh, so we all know there are there are obvious issues with um, assessing students online, um, particularly, I think, where you guys come from with your background uh, and the, you know, the university as a whole, because you're STEM. And STEM, I think, has faced extraordinary kind of um, situations uh, with hands-on classes that are expected to happen, um, you know, labs and, you know, doing all these e experiments and things like that that you guys do. And it would be fascinating to, to hear from you guys to find out how you, have you guys gone about doing this and, you know, a the activity while you've been doing it. Professor Amanda. So you, <coughs> shall I go ahead? Yeah. Yes. First of all, thank you. Thank you for giving me this platform uh, um, for academic integrity, UA Tech, academic integrity. Me from Gulf Medical University, uh, we are not alone in facing these problems, basically. So uh, we, we, we are one of the others and uh, we believe in learning from each other. But then we would also like to share our own best practices uh, during this time. Uh, uh, everything was going on, life was going on normally for everyone, but uh, in March came the uh, pandemic COVID like, uh, uh, like you know, uh, and then it changed the whole way we practice and we think and we reflect and we, every way it has changed us. Uh, basically, I should tell you that the Gulf Medical Institute is more into the health sector. So, uh, one thing we have to really look at is uh, uh, the competencies. Now, we all of us talk about distance learning, all of us talk about online learning and things like that. But for us, uh, as a medical university, we can go only to an extent as far as online learning is concerned. Because tomorrow, will you go to a doctor who has graduated from a fully online course? I'm sure I won't <laughs> go, neither you will go. So basically, uh, it's we are talking about health professions as such. The Gulf Medical is talking about medical, dental, pharmacy, uh, nursing, uh, laboratory, and all that. So uh, the didactic part, yes, to a large extent, we are able to do it. And then uh, we did go uh, an extra mile uh, to do the online clinical assessments. And of course, with our academic integrity, that's the most important thing uh, maintained uh, to an extent. But it was a temporary measure. At the end of the day, uh, we, we post our students in the hospital. So let me assure you, uh, Gulf Medical University graduates, uh, they don't do online clinical postings, but they go to the hospital. So uh, to look at patients and get training. So um, yes, we have all the dietetics. Yes, now, uh, when the pandemic is slightly under control, we don't know, second wave and things like that. Yes, we did manage. It is difficult for us to manage, but all the dietetic portions are online now. 
and then we have uh, the practical sessions the uh, uh, and the clinical postings are in the hospital practical sessions are in the lab and we have social distancing and we have all the uh, ministry directives in place for safety purpose for the student community and for the faculty community and <clears throat> life should go on at the end of the day uh, it can't come to a standstill and uh, yes pandemic or no pandemic we being from the health professionals we should be all the more geared uh, to pandemics because every patient who comes to our, our, our students or our doctors are covid positive are considered covid positive and work that way so <clears throat> So we have put many things into place. As I told you, uh, clinical posting goes on as usual and lectures are online. And what we brought in is some sort of an innovation uh, in, 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 in assessments. And uh, this one, will, of course, Dr. Gomti is going to talk about the academic integrity as far as the assessments are concerned. But I would like to talk more on the clinical aspect of it, uh, wherein we called it something called virtual patients. So uh, the Gulf Medical University has uh, 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 I should thank uh, our Chancellor, Professor Hassan Hamdi, who had introduced the concept of uh, virtual patients learning. So it was used uh, even before COVID. Uh, the virtual patients was used for teaching and learning students, not only for the MBBS. We're talking about nursing, we're talking about laboratory, we're talking about bachelor's of biomedical sciences, other programs where they use virtual patients in order to learn. Uh, so they can take these patients home and learn. So, uh, so it's it was it was sort of a uh, uh, <clears throat> teaching learning session, but now we have extended it to during the COVID time for assessment purpose called virtual patient clinical encounters. So, and then we also added the uh, element of uh, uh, lockdown browsers and uh, uh, respondents for us to maintain academic integrity. So, this is the brief, and we can further discuss it much more once the discussion is done. Thank you very much. So you've got a, a rather unusual, an old but now newly unusual situation for, for most of us in that the bulk of your teaching practice remained face to face, whereas we've all sort of switched, uh, or at least switched several months ago. Um, so you, you do raise some very interesting issues about the, the nature of the, of the teaching space and the, 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 the platform within which you, you're actually able to operate. Um, and sort of you, you highlight a few of the interesting uh, issues in terms of the way that assessment needs to be. And I think assessment is a, is a key issue across the board for, for all of us in terms of how we design assessments, um, how we ensure that they are being done properly by the correct person. And uh, I know that some of our, our listeners here today have some, some views and some input on, on this. So perhaps if we, we move to Professor Gamathi to, to sort of extend the conversation about the, the integrity aspect, if that's, if that's okay, Professor? Uh, yeah, thank you, Christopher. And uh, thank you for uh, having me on. And uh, as Professor Manda said, it was very challenging uh, during the COVID time because all of a sudden it uh, came in and we didn't, uh, you know, we hadn't really prepared for it, like I think no one was. And then we had to work our way through the entire uh, process so, uh, I, you know, we had a very good uh, IT ecosystem, thankfully. So it helped us a lot during this pandemic. Also, we discovered, in spite of that, we discovered that we needed huge amount of faculty uh, development sessions, actually. We conducted about 14 of them just to get the faculty on to how to do online teaching, how to do online assessments, what do you mean by lockdown browsers and things like that, which was not which was being done automatically on our systems while they are coming here and so uh, it was quite uh, challenging but uh, uh, we did put a lot of systems into place and uh, we have to thank we have a very proactive e-learning manager who does a lot of uh, helps us and i think he's proactive he actually predicts what might happen and makes sure that we are all ready for it so uh, all this helped us a lot and uh, also the virtual patient uh, uh, learning, which was being used as a tool for learning, which we adapted for the assessment as well. So I would like to share a few slides so that you get an idea of what really went on. So I hope I'll be able to share this. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. yeah, oh no, seeing the part one, I have to share the part two. <laughs> The part one was on teaching learning, the part two on the assessment. So uh, this is our experience with the assessment part of it. 
So we, as I said, we had around 14 of them, uh, all kinds of faculty development uh, ones. And so one of them was on how to do virtual uh, invigilation. <laughs> so we were not actually uh, trained for that. And so we tried out many different things. And uh, uh, the assessments, we, we have used the Moodle as our LMS. And so uh, we went on to, though we, uh, when we are on campus, actually we have another uh, software called ExamSoft, uh, which we use for exams. But uh, we had to move to Moodle for the examination. And so then we uh, actually implemented the respondents lockdown browser for it that we could, uh, you know, take control of their systems and, you know, they couldn't be opening other browsers and things like that during that time. Uh, uh, so, but uh, this was very, uh, are you able to hear me? Okay. Yes. So this was, yeah, thank you. So this was very uh, difficult for the students who were far away because a good number of them we discovered, and this we discovered quite late, uh, that they didn't have a very good, uh, you know, um, uh, connections, internet connections at home. Many of them were managing with good mobile connections, but they didn't have actually a good uh, Wi-Fi connection and things like home, at home. So we gave a huge number of formative assessments to them just to familiarize them with what a lockdown browser, how it will work, uh, check your internet connection speeds. And so that, you know, it wouldn't keep freezing because they used to send us images, ma'am, my assessment has frozen completely. I can't move to the next question. So we had a lot of issues like this. So uh, we had to give a lot of training to the students and the faculty, which happened over, uh, you know, literally months. And then uh, we had, of course, the clinical assessment for which we had the virtual patient encounter. So. Uh, the proctoring of the exams, which is our uh, main issue in many cases. Initially, uh, along with the Responders uh, Lockdown Browser, we also tried the Responders Webcam Monitoring, which is the other one which, is all, which can be enabled. Uh, but uh, this was required a very high bandwidth from the whole thing. So every now and then the exams would get frozen and we had limited time period in which they had to do. And so we found that this wasn't working too well for us. So uh, then we started to use Google Meet video conferencing simultaneously. So they had to come on Google Meet along with this, and then they had to, uh, we would proctor them uh, virtually. Uh, we had got another idea from another examination that we conduct for our students. This is called as the IFORM, International Foundations of Medicine. This exam is actually conducted by the US uh, National uh, uh, MLE, uh, National Board of Medical Examinations of the US, uh, which is a licensing exam for them. So they conduct a benchmarking exam for uh, many universities around the world. This is called as the I-Form. So for in this, they, they came up with this idea that you can use what we call as a two-device policy. So we actually shifted the two-device policy to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, not only the webcam, that everything else, what's around them, the area, what they are doing, we are able to monitor that as well as to what's happening. So they would do it on their uh, test on one computer, the laptop, and they would be have to place another one, second device, which is usually their mobile phone, with the Google Meet, and it will show like this as to what is happening for each one. So uh, this was very invigilation, uh, very proctoring intensive, as you can imagine. How many people can you watch? So for every 10 students, we had a proctor. So it was extremely, it was very, very intense indeed. So we had actually conducting exams the whole day long. We were making one after another. And then all of us, sometimes 36 of us used to be doing in groups of 10 students each. So uh, it was very challenging indeed. So is what we had seen. We had done like 106 courses and we had some 7,803 uh, sessions which were responders uh, monitor, uh, you know, uh, monitored and so on. And as I told you, we had all this. We had Google Meet with so many uh, durations. We had the go-to meeting. We did a lot of uh, training. We did a lot of proctoring. We did a lot of uh, activities so that we could uh, familiarize them and ourselves for it, which was a part of it. And uh, we had to other ways of doing things as well. There was the thesis defense for the other programs, the master programs. This And this was done through uh, online defense of thesis. Again, we would have all of them and they would present their thesis work. And so we had this kind of 
uh, go to meetings where they would, uh, you know, present their work and answer questions and do their thesis defense and so on. So the uh, important one, which was about the clinical competencies, which is always very challenging because this is done uh, face to face, right? So uh, we started to use the virtual patient, which was basically created as a tool for learning. We uh, adapted it to uh, for examination. So this we called it as the virtual clinical encounter examination or the YC as we call it. So it goes on like this. They, it goes on, they keep asking, they are questions, they click on questions, the answers come on. And uh, the virtual patient thing goes. Oops, what happened? So while the virtual patient encounter is going on, this is one kind of virtual patient they are. Oh, did I stop sharing? No, um, the, Dr. Gomati, do you have a video that you're sharing? Uh, yes, you couldn't see it? No. So then if I could just request you to stop sharing, and then you know at the bottom when you have the bubble for share, you click on it, a pop-up window no. comes up. One second. I think I, I got kind of, uh, uh, you are sharing. It's okay. The virtual patient, and are you able to see my screen right now? Yes, we can see the screen. Uh, the patient encounter is not important. Actually, it's auto-started. So the idea is that we have the virtual patient and they can click on various questions, ask them, and based on the feedback that they get, they'll answer the questions and so on. So they'll go on to requesting lab results and the lab results will be provided to them. Then they will go on to request for scans, the image will be provided and so on. So mm -hmm. uh, they actually answer questions uh, according to that. And here, as you can see, this is the whole faculty control room. We had a control room with the faculty actually sitting down and monitoring which patient should be, uh, you know, provided and what next should be given to the student and so on. So we had a whole faculty control room out there. And then there was live proctoring also going on on the side. So this was very, as we said, the faculty actually, I don't know whether we, I should say, worked uh, thrice as much. <laughs> and, <there's laughs> two, and we had to do a lot to relieve the students' uh, uh, stress as well. So. So uh, the important thing was that we, we uh, managed, I think, pretty successfully uh, almost all the clinical competencies except actual physical examination could be done very successfully. The physical examination, which obviously, you know, you see them touch and you see them do, that is a different story, except for that one particular one, almost all the clinical competencies which could address very well. And since this happened like in March and they had been training for the last two years, so we had adequate uh, opportunities to examine them for the physical uh, as a, you know, uh, examination and things like that at various time points before, because we do them after every rotation and so on. So we didn't have so much of issue. And thankfully, they could complete the whole, uh, you know, and address their competencies and go on further. So we had a lot of, we had, to, we had to do a lot of student feedback during this time. And so I just wanted to share a few slides of student feedback, if it's okay with you. Yeah. So uh, they, this is the kind of feedback we get. And the uh, uh, best part of the whole thing was they actually liked a lot of our webinar sessions. They liked a lot of our recorded ones and so on. And a good number of them said that we would like to continue this <laughs> blended way of learning. And uh, so this has actually uh, become our new normal now because of this. We weren't doing this earlier, but now that the students have said that they would like a mix of the two, we are able to do this. So we are not going back to the old days anymore. We are going to do the flipped classroom approach. We are acceptance of this new normal is very high. And uh, this has actually motivated our faculty to do a lot of innovation, a lot of changes, new ways of doing things and so on. And so this has become our new normal at GMU. So they come in or with all social distancing, sit all adequately thing, but still we are now uh, back to doing all the clinical uh, training and such things back again. So for us, that was like a temporary situation, <laughs> which we managed, I think, uh, pretty uh, successfully from our point of view. 
so uh, it, it, i'm open to if you want to ask anything this is i just thought it would be better to share some so get an idea of how it went on instead of my talking just talking It, well, that's that's incredibly thorough. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I mean, it raises a whole host of, of um, questions, issues, responses. Uh, I think it's it's quite telling that training staff is seen as innovative because that's something that should have. I mean, it, it obviously is because so many people were unfamiliar with online learning, online teaching, yeah. both from the student and the teacher perspective, and so. There was a it's a whole dynamic of, of engagement, not not just design and preparation, that that obviously needed a, a tremendous amount of discussion and training. Uh, I'm, I've, I love the fact that you've got student feedback and and some of the examples that you've given. I think are, are fantastic. Um, I have multiple questions, but I don't think it's fair that I uh, I <laughs> take all of the time. Um, um, I was particularly interested in in the um, the e thesis uh, examination because we've we've obviously had to do that um, particularly as well. Um, but I wanted to, to either hand it back to Professor Mander if you had anything to to add to Professor Gamathi. And then I think at this stage we could perhaps just open it up to the floor to see if there are any comments or particular questions about some of the experiences and examples you've given. Because I, I think you've given us a very thorough overview. So Professor Mander, do you have anything you'd like to, to add or, or follow up with? Okay, okay, sorry. The commonest mistake we make is to mute the mic and then start talking. That's the new normal. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, she said it all. But what I wanted to tell you is the three things which I hold uh, as uh, as the the secrets for success at Gulf Medical University is, of course, our IT ecosystem and the champions, especially IT champions and the faculty development programs. Uh, to And then uh, just now, one of our IT champion has uh, uh, put his uh, camera on, Dr. Lamba. And uh, so basically, what's happening is we need these people in order to carry forward these initiatives, new initiatives, because it's a paradigm shift. It's just not taking a lecture and putting it online. What two things is most important is to engage the students when we're teaching online. And second thing is to provide feedback to them. So these two things had to take place. And uh, I think uh, to a large extent, we were able to do that. Uh, uh, the other thing what we learned was, uh, second thing is student wanted a lot of mentoring uh, required and that also online mentoring was, was put into place. Third thing was, uh, Dr. Gopi just showed a, a small clipping of a video. Uh, wherein that was supposed to be a, a patient with chest pain. In reality, also, we will not be able to take a student to the bedside and start assessing when a patient has a chest pain. So it is it's a difficult sort of an, a situation because we have to treat the patient and not try, try to assess how much the student knows about treating chest pain. So when she showed that uh, uh, the, the video, uh, he is actually an actor enacting uh, mm -hmm. the role of a patient who has suffered a myocardial infarction so we, we will be able to uh, we will be able to assess the, the the thinking process the critical thinking process the diagnostic abilities and the management skills of uh, of the student in this critical situation uh, wherein uh, it is in a very controlled environment and uh, we will be able to assess the student so this is something which wasn't done before and which uh, it took a pandemic for us to realize that we'll be able to do all these things. So certain things definitely was sort of a uh, learning experience for us. And uh, uh, and, and we, are, we are wiser by the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Christopher. Yep, I was just sure I was unmuted as well. Sorry, I'm following, <laughs> following your advice. Well, I think, this is a very interesting sort of area of, of topic and I mean obviously the, the point of these seminars is their seminars these webinars is they're very very broad uh, in terms of, of scope um, and so we will often move back and forth but uh, this issue that you raise about um, engagement with students uh, and uh, and also the part that they, they feel that they need in terms of more mentoring 
which makes sense because you've, you've lost the human contact or that sort of safety net of being able to go to a professor and say, I'm panicking, I need just, just the confidence of your face-to-face -face response. I mean, that's, that's missing. And so that's one element of it. But what I was interested in, um, particularly from what you said, and this is perhaps maybe a question for, for everybody to consider, is the issue of cameras and the issue of, of engagement through an online medium. And so a lot of the platforms have innovative ability. You know, they have chat you know, functions and breakout groups, and there's a lot we can do with the technology. But in terms of the actual face-to-face -face delivery and that sense of engagement, and I appreciate that there are cultural sensitivities and that there are bandwidth capabilities. Um, but just as an, just before I ask, I sort of ask for people's views. I give this as an example. I, I saw a, a recent post um, on LinkedIn about a professor in Harvard, and this professor is delivering a lecture in front of a, a three-screen digital display, and on the, the screen immediately in front of her. There's the face of all of her students. And on the right, she's got an interactive whiteboard, and on the left, she has another form of sort of online ability. And there are multiple cameras placed. So no matter where she turns, the students can see her plus the, the, the form that she's um, delivering on. And I contrasted this with my, my current teaching experience, which is I spend five or six hours a day looking at the screen of my own video. Because my <laughs> don't put their cameras up. So I, I know they're there. I see chat things and they I hear voices, but you know, you get a little bit tired of looking at your own face and you miss that ability to to read people and, and to build conversation, you know, through people's responses. And so I was wondering what people if people have shared this experience or if it's just me that my students don't like turning cameras on for. Um, and so what what maybe people have, have done. Um, um, because being able to force a student to turn on a camera is, in an assessment process, might be a possibility, but in the classroom is, is not necessarily something that is a possible or even advisable. Um, so I was just curious what what people have have experienced or come up with regarding this issue. I mean, and Lucy, from anybody from our speakers, from Zenith, from anybody. I mean, it's a, I think it's a, an issue I'm very curious about. I, I think that's fantastic. Point you uh, brought up, Chris. I, oh my God, students! And I actually always assume that this is a generation that would have their webcams on, right? Because they're they they love taking selfies and they love putting up, you know, videos and things like that. But w when we're in class, it's it's hard pressed to get one person to keep their webcam on, right? <laughs> and you know, you feel like you're constantly talking to yourself. In fact, I started a podcast just because I realized I could talk so much, <laughs> you know, all by myself. But what I'm really interested in with uh, Professor Manda and uh, Professor Gumati is because you guys teach the subjects that you do. Um, do you see this? And if you do, how do you then, uh, uh, you know, in, in a normal classroom setting, how do you uh, pick up on whether students are really grasping the concept that you guys are teaching and, you know, that kind of engagement so that when you do come to the assessment, you know, on a, on a, on a, uh, you know, on like a, if you had to think about like a classroom that, yes, I've got my students up to the level where they should be. And now I'm going into the assessments. Yes. Go ahead. Go so, uh, so what I do. Muted. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, yeah, sorry, sir. Once again, <laughs> this seems to be a common issue. Uh, so uh, what I do, and I think many of us do here, is that almost in every, uh, let's say, a class of about 45, 50 minutes or so, we definitely have at least about three or four polls in between. So we are always having pop-up polls <laughs> about the thing, what they're going to do next, what is their background thing, whatever. So we have a poll and then we get an analysis also at the end of it all as to who all participated and who didn't and uh, it takes some time but if you see repeatedly somebody is not uh, participating then we get back to them and actually arrange for a google meet and talk and say what's happening why aren't you actually participating you know so we uh, kind of sometimes even track to that extent that you say you didn't answer on the poll so we get uh, the poll results and analysis also from our go-to go webinars. So we are able to do that as well. So most of the time, I do pop-up polls. Right. At least four of them in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to add on to what she's told. 
the days for uh, giving uh, having students at the same time and giving a lecture has gone so they are they are they, are, they it does so you will never be able to ensure whether the students are listening to you or they are learning or something like that basically all the lectures are available online so you can just post it anytime right we need to have face to face sessions it's called the flipped classrooms give them all the resources beforehand and conduct something like a team based learning right this is only this is the only way to ensure the students we are engaged with the students basically the team based learning concept for learning so what happens is all the learning material has to be given to them in advance right and then uh, key concepts can be given by lectures lectures can be available and recorded because people are in various time zones they may not be able to present uh, on the same time as as you want right so it's it's to change our expectations it's important to change our expectations of a lecture give them the lectures they come prepared on one point at a time and then we have question and answer sessions or doubt clearing sessions this is the only way to go forward so the days for giving didactic lectures and expecting your students to listen to you in rapt attention is gone i think with that level of engagement that you constantly have they will have a different level of confidence when they actually go into the assessments absolutely right and that that automatically also helps uh, to reduce the chances of them wanting to cheat or wanting to find an answer somewhere else because they're already pretty much self confident in the knowledge that they've taken taken from you guys fantastic this is exactly uh, this is exactly what we are following now when we, when the students come to the university we don't them allow them to go outside and loiter in the corridors and all that so we want to keep them engaged in the classroom so practical sessions is one clinical of course hospitals but in the university either it is a flipped classroom where they come and get engaged in small groups and uh, practical sessions so these are the things they come uh, to the this one uh, to the university so that's how we engage them in the university yeah. Yeah. if no i think the question i had a question other, yeah sorry i just wanted to add one more thing to the tbl that uh, professor manda was uh, explaining the team based learning which we do in groups now we have started to do it actually online as well as e tbl and we are using the zoom breakout rooms and such things to actually put them into small groups and get them to engage among themselves with the uh, facilitator and then come back again and uh, answer the questions and so on to keep them more engaged with their learning so that's the newer one that we are adopting this uh, particular academic year um chris i think elizabeth um has a question uh, excellent wonderful please Hi, thank you. Um, oh my goodness, sorry. Um, I was just wondering if the people who aren't speaking would maybe mind muting their microphones. It's really, really difficult to hear. Thank you so much. Um, no, oh, uh, oh my goodness. Okay, thank you. I can hear myself. Um, thank you. So I just had a question. Um, it seems like every other week here in the UAE, we have different guidelines as to whether or not we're even able to ask students to turn on their webcams. Um, there seem to be a lot of privacy concerns that sometimes other countries or regions don't share. Uh, so I'm always a little bit unclear as to whether or not I can even legally ask my students to turn on their webcams, especially for an assessment. And I'll have some occasionally reply that they read an article in the paper that no, they're not obliged to do this. So um, at University of Bolongong, Dubai, I say, well, that's the university's policy. So you know, we are asking you to please put on your webcam during an assessment. You have been notified in advance of this. You can make arrangements for privacy. But we still occasionally have students who don't want to comply. Um, I was just wondering if anybody has any insight into this and any suggestions to offer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, I know, we we had got a directive from the Ministry of Education uh, regarding this that, that they should be, uh, you know, uh, it is important mandatory for them to be having the webcams on. So we have been in constant communication with the Ministry of Education, and they had told us about this that uh, you know it is important for them to be. And so they they sent us out uh, uh, the guidelines in which it is included. 
Okay, thank you. I think verifying the uh, verified, uh, you know, identity is so important for assessment. I, I, who are you assessing? Otherwise, we will never know. I I don't understand how how you can have assessments. Even if we go to any in any center and take any of those other exams, they are always verifying the identity of the person. I think that is very important. It's yeah. not about passwords. So I think identity verification is the mandatory for assessment. At least, I mean, they don't need to show in the webinars and things, but the exams, yes. <laughs> I think in a, in a lot of ways we are uh, we are lucky. We don't get that huge response that's coming across. Like for instance, in USA, uh, the proctoring uh, industry had a huge backlash uh, from the student communities, uh, but. Here, I think, yes, we have had those occasional uh, students coming up and saying, hey, I'm not sure about my privacy. But uh, Professor Manda, you're actually right. Uh, we did get that mandate um, in, in, you know, I think in May when we were, we realized that even the finals and everything was, they were going to go through this whole lockdown process and it was going to go beyond the end of the term that the ministry mandated that when assessments are happening, um, students are expected to have their webcams on and uh, I think we've adopted that as a policy, like Elizabeth said, at the University of Wollongong in Dubai. So as part of our online um, exam process, um, this is a mandate that's there, which is um, informed to students. And yes, we do get occasionally some students who will try to say, yeah, but you know, I read in the newspaper um, that they said you don't have to switch on the webcam and things like that. And then the answer typically is that, yeah, sure, but here's the thing. Um, if the ministry has mandated this, the university has a clear policy, you've been informed of this, and this is the process that we are going to have to follow. And um, and explaining to them, you know, why this is necessary, exactly as uh, Professor Gomati said, that come back and tell them that, guys, we need to know who we are assessing at the end of the day. And you want us to do that because you may be honest, which is fair, but then there may be somebody um, in the background with somebody else who's trying to help out, which will be unfair to you as a student. Right. So when we explain that to them, I think I think they do understand and, you know, it helps gives them that level of um, appreciation of the system and how we are trying from our side. Chris. Absolutely. I mean, um, I've had some of my students who are also teachers looking at ways in which you, you know, you almost have like multiple stop checks, which is OK, I need your camera on. But at the same time that you're doing this activity, I then need you to log into the Zoom meeting to then do this, to then to do this. So the equivalent of making sure they're not bots, you know, like so having camera. I mean, we've, we've potentially seen those videos of students who have filmed themselves sitting at a computer and then put that phone in front of the camera to sort of, you know, and so even even with the, the technology that we have, it's still one step behind. I think what's interesting is a lot of the questions that we are having about student engagement, authenticity, assessment, you know, participation from an online. We didn't have these conversations with face to face, but they were perfectly relevant from a pedagogical perspective. We just didn't focus on them. Now we're saying, oh, well, students can, can subvert this. It's like, well, they've always been able to subvert anything because, you know, necessity will find a, find a way. But I think I agree with colleagues where, where there is a policy, particularly from a ministry in our context. Um, and as we said, with an assessment, it's not a it's not a new event. It's something that's planned, it's scheduled, it's structured. Um, some of the issues I have with class teaching are, oh, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm in my home and I'm, yeah, well, I'm in my home too. You know, but your know, teaching classes are, are set at particular times. And so there, there should be a structural way of which um, this can be organized. Um, Yes, I do miss. I do. I like working from home, but I do miss. I do miss face to face being able to see people. That's uh, yeah. an issue. Yes, uh, Professor, you have a sorry, you have a, a comment or a point? Yeah, just a comment. Uh, uh, on a very lighter note, actually, we had this uh, e-learning policy and all. We wanted to implement it from 2017 to 2022, and then came the pandemic, and within three months, we implemented the whole thing. You know, that, that's how it went, uh, basically. And two weeks time, as Professor Gomati was telling, to train the faculty, uh, six or how many, how, how, uh, 12 or some, some so many faculty development programs. So I don't know whether Ms. Dr. Mr. Suraj is there on, 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 the, on the platform, but uh, he was a champion for us. And then uh, he, he, he single-handedly conducted all the faculty development programs, trained the faculty within, within two weeks 
break time actually uh, two or three weeks and then afterwards we had to actually implement it so we thought the students will uh, students also i should thank the students basically because they also accepted it in a way and they cooperated and that's important very important for us because it's at the end of the day they were the ones who are uh, who are the end users and uh, they cooperated with us and they did give us some good report and some good suggestions for improvement as well and um, we we listen basically that's important for us to listen to them and make improvements so uh, we did accordingly and then i think uh, we learned our lessons and we are improving on the process of improvements i had a question um so on the um the virtual patient that pro program that you guys launched so you didn't have this before the pandemic like before Not the lockdown it was very much before the pandemic it was there okay. very much before the pandemic students okay. were learning through virtual patients but okay. it was uh, during the pandemic we had uh, uh, adapted it uh, for the assessment purpose as well uh, so uh, we uh, we had we had utilized the same platform uh, to make assessments also online assessments as i told you the sugomti showed you a small clipping of a patient in the icu with uh, chest pain so uh, we were trying to assess uh, students have already completed the clinical posting luckily before the pandemics and they were actually assessed in each clerkship they were assessed at the end of each clerkship they had to pass for them to come to the final examination so mm -hmm. we do have a good solid uh, assessment of the students in the clinical competencies especially physical examinations and other competency domains so this was just a comprehensive examinations and therefore we could not get real patients because of the restrictions and therefore we used virtual patients so so that was only uh, Yes, sir. we also had some of our faculty staff. Everyone uh, become patients. Yeah, <laughs> they were simulated patients. We made them uh, mimic all kinds of symptoms and put them, made them do uh, become patients. So actually, we created a huge patient bank like this virtual patient bank. Yeah, including we had to. Uh, in fact, all my organs have been removed <laughs> by the surgeon. <laughs> Oh my god so uh, so that's um, so you so effectively the cases that you guys bring in, in front of the students will keep changing because you've got that many in the database now that's amazing amazing chris yeah absolutely i mean and this is, i think is is critical that we build up this sort of body of knowledge from experience that then then not only helps us cope with a panic but actually reinforces and strengthens our teaching practice because i think the beginning of the pandemic, we went for a 24 hour period. Online learning is not real, it's not valid, it's not accredited. 24 hours later, online learning is exactly the same, the same experience. That's impossible. We needed to train people, we need to build understanding, and we need to address some of these issues that we, we just didn't know about. And particularly, I think it's given us an opportunity to address issues we should have been talking about beforehand. Um, yeah. Well, fundamental to, to the learning experience. Um, and so it's, it's not that I don't want to go back to the old way. But I don't want to go back to the old way. I want the new way to be better because we've had this opportunity to to really think about some of the these critical issues. Um, yeah. Very mindful of the time, um, and I'm wondering if we if we have any other questions from from our our colleagues uh, who have joined, um, and if not, then maybe if we have any final comments from our, our two speakers. Because we okay. don't actually know that the people asking the questions are the one asking the questions because we can't see them, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But if, I mean, if, if there are no, I mean, we, we very much appreciate everybody joining in and uh, we hope to keep this sort of as an ongoing for uh, not just conversation, but potential, you know, solution development um, and, and practical exchange. Um, even though our two speakers are, are firmly linked within a medical and a health structure, the examples that they've given are relevant, with the exception of the cadavers, are, are relevant across um, all structures of, of education. Um, and, and so hopefully it's of some both interest and some value to, to our colleagues. Do, do either Professors Mandrog or Matthew have uh, any sort of final comments you'd like to, to make or, or um, share? Yes, yeah, Dr. Bomati. Then I will talk. Uh, okay. So, uh, yes, I, I'm happy that we were able to share our uh, experiences. 
And as we said, we don't. We now have a new normal. We we are going to improve based on what we have learned in this uh, period. And uh, I think we, we have uh, gone on to doing things in a better way. And luckily for us, I mean, unlike you folks, many of you, we have been allowed to have students back on campus. And mm -hmm. so for the clinical training, for the labs, we are having them back on. We are getting them for two days a week for every program and so on. So we are able to ha have the best of both worlds right now. <laughs> we are able to get them here and train them the way we want to train, as well as give all the ob online learning in a blended kind of format so that it's good for them, it's good for us. And I think uh, finally we are going to emerge stronger from the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I should say that, uh, you know, life goes on normally despite the pandemic and uh, we have new programs, we have renewal of the programs uh, and we have all these uh, excellent review team visits going on online, basically. So we had about three or four uh, going on like that. So the regulatory authorities have also now started looking in a different way and accepting mm -hmm. this new normal. So this is a huge relief for us and they are very cooperative. And uh, and I think we have learned a lot of lessons, as Dr. Gopti was telling. Yes, life has become easier. Cost has come down, so this is also important. So uh, for for some in some areas, I'm talking about. Uh, and then it's it's at the end of the day, the students have accepted it, and the faculty has also started accepting it the new normal. So let's all uh, uh, together, uh, you know, live the new new normal and enjoy it. <laughs> No, thank you so much. I think this was brilliant um, as, a, as a first uh, practitioner series. Um, kind of sets the tone for the rest that we plan to have. Um, it's fantastic to hear the practices that you guys have brought in and how you guys have tackled um, this whole integrity um, in assessments, uh, particularly given the, you know, the area that you guys are in. As I said at the beginning, this is these are the areas that where we think, you know, how is this even going to be possible because they're supposed to be so hands on. So sharing your you know, problem based learning and the team based learning and of course the vice, um, I think was fantastic examples of how um, the industry is innovating um, and looking at how we can ensure integrity in the assessments that we are doing so that, um, you know, we, there's still value for the degrees at the end of the day. And like you said, we can still trust the doctors that come out and the nurses that come out for sure. Thank you so much, Chris. Yes, no, I mean, just to echo your thanks, uh, this has been a fantastic presentation um, and discussion. Uh, it, it raises, I think, issues that we could keep talking about for another X number of hours and another number of section of, of webinars. So very much appreciate the input and, and thank you for sharing your experiences. And um, thank you to everybody for joining. And we um, look to, to potentially see you all again in, in, in future events. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. We do have some more comments coming through. If um, the audience could keep an eye on the chat, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone. We welcome you to become a member of the Center for UE Center for Academic Integrity, and uh, so we can continue to send you updates about our next event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Venus. Thank you, Christopher. Thanks. Thank you, Christopher.